Twitter ads has many of the same targeting options as a lot of the other online marketing platforms. There's demographics and interest targeting, but Twitter also has some unique targeting options available only on their platform. Not to mention, over the last couple of years, Twitter's been making adjustments to their targeting options, so now they're a little bit different than they were in the past. In this video, we're going to give you a rundown of all the targeting options available on Twitter ads as of early 2022. On the Twitter ads platform, all of the targeting for your campaigns is going to live at the ad group level. So I've gone ahead and created a website traffic campaign objective and created a placeholder ad group so we can go through each of the different options. I'm going to skip adding a name and I'm gonna skip all of the delivery stuff and all that sort of thing. We're gonna start with the first set of targeting options which is going to be around demographics. Just like pretty much all of the other ad platforms out there, we're able to target by gender. You can target any women or men there's not better targeting than that to start off with. So that's what we've got. Next, we can target based on different age ranges. You can target all, which will be the default. Or if you want to select an age range, you can come here. And then we have a few drop downs. On the low end, you can start at age 13. And then there are different increments as ages go up for 18, 21, 25, all the way up to 50. For now, we'll leave it as 13. And then on the high end, you can click this drop down and you can choose either one of the next age brackets up, or you can choose and up. So here I could choose to have people between the ages of 13 and 34, or as I'm leaving it right now, it will be between 13 and up. So basically everybody on the platform. Not quite as customizable as we see on say the Facebook platform, but still a little bit better than some others. The next option is going to be around location. And you can see that by default, I'm targeted into the United States as a country level. But if you click into this field here, we're basically given carte blanche to do whatever we want. So if we just start typing, I'm just gonna type in the letter A, and now you'll see that a number of different locations with the letter A included have shown up. And I did this for a reason, mostly just to show that you can target things in three major categories, city, region or state, and then all the way down here, I'm sure I'll be able to find one, there's a country that starts with A. Those are going to be the three main categories you can target on Twitter. So just start typing and find the option that makes the most sense to you based on where you need to target. And then once you've found that, let's say we wanted to target Los Angeles, you just check the box over here. And now all of our targeting has reverted to Los Angeles. So I'll click out of this and you can see that only that targeting option is down here. For the sake of this video, just so we can have a larger audience size, I'm gonna switch it back to the United States. The last option we have in this field is going to be around language. And this is optional. You don't have to change the targeting here. But if you click into the box, there are a preset list of languages that you can target on the Twitter platform. So find whichever one or handful of languages makes the most sense to you. And again, just check the box next to it and it'll be added to your list. As we scroll down, the next set of targeting options is going to be around devices. And to be quite honest, Twitter has a lot of different targeting options for devices. The first is going to be around operating system, where you can decide if you want to target somebody who's using iOS, Android, some other platform, or desktop. As of right now, desktop and the other mobile are the only ones that don't give me any further customization. If I check the box next to desktop, it just keeps it there. If I check the box next to other mobile, there is a dropdown that opens up, but from where I am currently, potentially just because I'm targeting the United States, there's only one option that comes up. You kind of just target all of it or other. So for now, I'll just check out of these two. But you do have quite a bit of control within the iOS or Android operating system. So just for an example, let's click into iOS. We get the same dropdown we saw with the other one. And now you effectively get to choose how updated you want this person's device to be. We're currently in iOS 15. We're in that range. That is the most up-to-date operating system but you can have your ads run all the way back to anybody who's on 12.4 or all the way back even to 6.0 and above. This might not make a lot of sense for people who are just trying to get website traffic, but if you're trying to get users to come and engage with your app, but your app is not supported past a certain operating system, it's really important to make sure you're targeting the people who can actually engage with your app. The same is true for Android, but the checkbox process is essentially the same. It's just a different list of names of operating systems. So I'm not going to check into that. But as you can see, if you leave all boxes unchecked off to the right, the audience size is still huge. That just means that you're opting into all operating systems and you haven't narrowed anything down. So it'll look fine if you're trying to target everyone, if all those boxes are unchecked. 
Next, we can target based on the device model. Kind of a different take on what the operating system is. But here we've got all the different brands that make all different mobile devices and things. Apple obviously being a very popular one. So we'll open that up. You can target anybody on any iPad, a specific sixth generation, seventh, iPad 2, iPad Air, iPad Mini, all of these different targeting options. And this is what I mean when I say Twitter has quite a lot of controls when it comes to devices. You can get very customized on here if you need to. My guess is that the vast majority of you don't need to, but if you do, you can do that. Next, you can target people based on carrier. So who do they have their plan with? If you click into this box, the first thing you need to do is choose your country because all countries have different brands that will support their internet and cellular service. So for Canada, you can see Airtel, there's Bell down here. You can get a lot of different brands on here. So again, choose the one that makes the most sense for you if you need to narrow it down. And then the last checkbox we have here in the devices group is to target people who first used Twitter on a new device or carrier. I genuinely don't know why you would need to use this targeting option, but that's only because I've never run into a scenario where this makes sense for me. If it does speak to you and you think this is an option that you need to leverage, good news, there's a checkbox for that. But again, my guess is most people don't need to use that. Now let's scroll down a little bit more and get into the custom audiences section. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this group because it actually warrants its own separate video of showing how to put it together. But effectively, you can create custom audiences or retargeting audiences in some ways on Twitter and utilize them in your campaigns. Since this is a placeholder account, we don't actually have any, so I can't show you what those would look like. But if we check into this box, you can see that there are four main categories. And to talk about what each of those categories are, I'm actually going to go to the audience section of Twitter ads. So if you'll follow me here, we go up to tools and then we click audiences. And just as I mentioned before, there's nothing to see here because we haven't created the video for it. So if I come up and click create audience, you'll see the four main categories are reiterated here. List, meaning you can upload a list of your customers. So it's basically just a customer upload. Website activity, which will be a group of people who've been cookied, who came to your website, and you can have a number of different targeting options within that. App activity, which is to create an audience of your app users who took a specific action, such as buying an item, or app activity combination, where you can combine multiple different app activity audiences together to come up with a new combination. So for now, that's all the time I'm gonna spend on target audiences on Twitter, but we'll come back to that in a future video. Let's hop back into the campaign creation process that I had earlier and keep moving down the line. As I mentioned, you can either include or exclude those custom audiences from your campaign. And lastly, you can check a box that says include lookalikes of your selected custom audiences. So let's say you wanna target people who have been to your site before or target people who are part of your customer list, but you also wanna extend your reach based on those users. All you have to do is check this box and you'll find the lookalike audience added of those custom audiences. Now let's scroll down a little bit further into the section that I think you probably thought I was gonna talk most about, and that's just the targeting features on Twitter. The first is going to be based on keywords, which if you click this little information box here, keywords allow you to target audiences by including keywords related to terms that they have searched, tweeted, or based on tweets they have engaged with. So effectively, most of the actions you can take on Twitter can be targeted with keywords. But you'll also notice that you can exclude keywords as well because Twitter gives a warning that too many excluded keywords can limit your campaign's reach just like anything else. If you have too many negative audiences, that can be a problem. Since this is paid media pros, let's say I wanted to target a number of people who were interested in PPC, paid search, and Google ads. All I'd have to do is type in those keywords. I would check a box next to each one of them. And then all of those keywords will be added in here. And you'll see that the target audience estimate got quite a bit smaller because people aren't talking about PPC and paid search as much as maybe we would like. But overall, it's very easy to add these keywords. And then if you decide for any reason that you don't want them, all you have to do is come over here and click this X and it'll clear all the keywords out of there. If you don't wanna spend a bunch of time typing in each of the individual keywords, you can bulk upload them. You can also get recommendations based on the keywords that you have, which I'm not gonna spend time on that right now, but there are some really good options in there to help you extend the reach beyond what you had in there already. The next targeting option is follower lookalikes, and Twitter is the only platform, to my knowledge, that has this type of targeting. So as a quick overview, follower lookalikes reach people with similar interests to an account's followers. They're based on things that people tweet, what they retweet, 
what they click on, what they engage with, all sorts of different signals. But with this targeting, you're not targeting the followers of the accounts you provide. You're targeting people who look like those followers. So if I type in a couple of different industry blogs that we know in the PPC space, then the people that we're going to be targeting are people who look like the people who follow Search Engine Land, Search Engine Journal, and PPC Hero. This is a great way to find people who engage with your competitor brands, for example. They might not follow your competitors, but they act the same way on Twitter as the people who do follow your competitors. So if anything, that's a little bit better because they haven't already decided their brand affinity for your competitor versus somebody else. They can still be swayed. And since I still have the targeting options in here for follower lookalikes, you'll see that this recommendations text is now black, which means that there are some recommendations. So if I click on this, now it opens up this huge list off to the side of all these different accounts that I could add in here. Some of them I absolutely recognize, some of them are friends. And if I wanted to add any of them, all I would need to do is click the little plus button at the end of each gray box, and that would add them to my follower lookalike targeting. For now, I'm gonna X out of this and remove all the targeting so we go back to a flat line. The next targeting option we have is going to be based on interests. And these are pretty broad in the way that you would expect interest. They're based on things that people tweet and retweet, as well as what they click on, who they follow, and a lot of other pieces. Twitter says they're most effective when you choose interests that align directly with your campaign's creatives. So ideally, you can find a way to model your product or your business, whatever you're trying to sell in your ad creative, into one of these different interest buckets and then target those interests. So if you're able to do that, might be a good option for you on Twitter. But if we check into this box, you'll see that all of these different interests are going to be preset options where you can come in and choose from a dropdown. Like if I choose beauty, you can see here that there's body art, face care, hair care, skin care, all sorts of things where all you have to do is check the box next to it. Or you can easily come up into the box and just start typing. And there's only one option for marketing, but there's still at least an option. And it'll narrow down all of the interests that are based on what you've typed in so far. The next targeting option is going to be movies and TV shows. And if we click on this box over here, we're trying to reach specific people who are engaged with TV shows and movies before, during, and after a telecast. I specifically wanted to read this because the before, during, and after a telecast is very important. Twitter is really trying to capitalize on specific moments when it comes to movies and TV shows. So things like streaming TV shows are probably not going to be on here because you can kind of stream them whenever. That's one of the beauties of streaming. Additionally, if something happened a long time ago or is happening a long time in the future, it's not going to be on the list. They're trying to focus on things that are more recent or happening right now. Additionally, I can say from a user perspective, this is one of the most difficult fields to get the right thing to come up in. Depending on what you're trying to find, make sure that you type it in specifically, otherwise Twitter will have a problem. So to make Joe happy, let's just type in Star Wars. And this goes very close to what I was saying about the timing piece. There are only three options here, Star Wars Visions, Star Wars Resistance, and Lego Star Wars Terrifying Tales. You're not going to find any of the movies that are here because there aren't any movies being released for Star Wars right now. Odds are, if there were a new movie coming out, that would be one of the line items here. So if you wanna capitalize on a TV show or a movie or something like that that's happening now, you can do that. But don't be surprised if not everything you wanna target shows up here. Okay, let's X out of this. That's enough of making Joe happy about Star Wars. In a similar vein around timing, you can also target around events. So if I scroll down a little bit, cause I know this is gonna pop open a list. I can come and check into this field. You can see that there are a few different categories that show up. Conferences, entertainment, politics, sports. So if I click into conferences, and see one that I know I'm familiar with is going to be the social media marketing world down here for 2022. That's coming up in about a month and a half from now. So it makes sense that it would show up here, but there are other options you can target as well. Like if I come down to sports, you'll see that there are different things around the Australian Open, the Winter Olympics, Daytona 500, all this stuff, but they are pretty close to happening right now. The furthest one back that I've seen is going to be of July of 2021. Everything else is pretty much moving forward. So you're probably not gonna be able to target people based on your favorite March Madness from the 1990s. So just getting that out of the way now. But if there is a sporting event that you wanna capitalize on or any other event that are in these different categories, all you need to do is come in here and find it and check the box. 
the last targeting option that has the same type of usability is going to be conversation topics. And these are based on people who tweeted, engaged with a tweet, or looked at a tweet about a conversation topic. It feels very similar to interests, but the thing that's different here is that conversations have a look back window of only 28 days. So not only is somebody engaged with this specific topic, but they've also been engaged with it recently, within the last month. This isn't something that they tweeted about two years ago and now we're targeting them with an ad. It is pretty timely. So if we come in the box, all you need to do is start typing. Again, just pick a letter. And now all sorts of things will come up. Actors, product, athlete, musicians, a sports team, a brand, a TV show, whatever the conversation topic you're trying to target, just start typing and see if it shows up. This list is going to be far too long for them to try and give any sort of preset, and it's gonna to be too hard for me to try and narrow things down for you. So just start typing here and see what pops up. Now, the last thing within this targeting features group is going to be this additional options section. And these are all pretty easy opt-in, opt-out. You can choose for this first one to retarget people who saw or engaged with your past tweets. So effectively, these are tweet engagement audiences. You could simply leave all of the other targeting options blank, meaning that you would only be retargeting people who've engaged with your tweets. That would be one way to retarget them. You can also choose this expand your audience piece. Think of this basically as the fuzzy match around like a Facebook audience. You can opt into expanded targeting. You can also do the same thing on LinkedIn. And even on the Google Display Network, there are options to expand your reach beyond your audience. So if you're seeing good success and you're having trouble finding different targeting options to reach into, maybe just check the box here and get a little bit more reach out of your campaign. And then lastly, you can say also target followers of paid media pros. Now with your specific campaign, you'll be targeting followers of whatever account you have. You're not going to be targeting all of our followers. But again, this is another good way to retarget people based on their engagement with you on the Twitter platform, but specifically targeting followers as opposed to people who just saw or engaged with your tweets. Okay, moving right along here. Let's scoot down to placements. It's going to be relatively short, and then we're going to try to talk about the Twitter audience platform for here in just a minute. The first group is just called placements because that is going to be everything that happens on Twitter. There are three main groups that you can target. So the home timelines, that's going to look something like this. Basically, when you're on the home feed, you're going to see different Twitter ads pop up within that feed. And then the other options that you can actually choose to opt into or out of, you'll notice that home timelines is grayed out. You cannot opt out of that. But the other two you can, and those are profiles, which whenever you're looking at somebody's profile, you can sometimes see ads in those tweets, or the search results. If you go to Twitter, you search for something, you have all the tweets come up and an ad can show in the middle. If for whatever reason you don't want to show alongside different profiles or the search results, all you have to do is check out of a box. But I personally can't really see a reason why you would want to do that. So you'd probably always want to stay opted into all the different options here. And then the last targeting options that we have on the platform are going to be the Twitter audience platform. It's actually off Twitter. Kind of funny that I said it's the last one on the platform because it's not even on the platform. At a very high level, you can decide to opt into, meaning leaving this on, or out of, by closing this down, utilizing the Twitter audience platform. And that extends your reach to anybody outside of the Twitter platform itself into the extended network. Essentially, the reason you would do that is to drive greater scale for your campaigns just by extending the reach and getting into other apps that they use every day. So similar to that audience expansion piece, if you're seeing good results and you want to make sure that you've got as much reach as possible, leaving the Twitter audience platform on is probably a good idea. There are a few different ad formats you can use here. Native, banner, rectangle, a couple of full screen options. And then you do have some different settings that you can choose based on certain ad categories, as well as some advanced targeting where you can exclude certain apps. But all of that is going to be getting very much into the weeds for this video. Needless to say, there are a lot of ways that you can customize how your ads will show and where your ads will show across the Twitter audience platform. So just coming back up to the bread and butter of Twitter targeting features and whatnot, clearly there are a lot of different targeting options you can use on the Twitter ads platform. I personally really like the follower lookalike audiences because they're unique to the Twitter platform. Other platforms don't really have those, but it's also an extremely timely platform utilizing the movies and TV shows, events and conversation topics, focusing on users who are engaging with those things within the recent past and recent events that are taking place. But that doesn't mean that every product that you advertise on Twitter has to be something that's timely or relates to those different features. You can just make creatives that maybe speak to those events, but still promote your product 
or you can ignore it altogether. Maybe you just know that people who are going to watch a specific event are also the same people who will likely buy your product. Whatever the reason is, there's a lot of different ways that you can reach your target audience on Twitter. I'm always curious to hear how people utilize the platform. So if you have any really cool combinations, I'd love to hear about it. Or if you have any follow-up questions to any of the targeting options I've talked about today, feel free to leave us a question in the comments and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.